It's a rainy day in LA today, which is a very rare thing. And uh, I said I would do some Q&A, so this is a good day for it. We're indoors. Let's jump into it. What's in your mouth? Show me, show me, show me. Show me though, you have to show me. What is it, Bean? I'm indoors, I don't know where you are. Let's start off with Noah. First of all, Noah, you gotta get a picture, man. It just says a big N and a purple square. Okay, could you talk about how to deal with practicing for long periods of time, i.e. avoiding RSI, repetitive stress injury or neck problems? Okay, I have neck problems. I'm oh, anybody, If you're around me for any length of time, you will never inevitably see me doing like, I'm always stretching, I'm always pulling my arms back and rolling my neck and, I've actually taken, over the last month or so, I've done it a few times, I've taken to sleeping on the floor, on the actual hard floor. It started around the time of the saxophone camp last month, uh, and it worked. It's a kind of a pain in the butt to sleep that way. It's hard to stay asleep, but I tell you what, I wake up in the morning feeling amazing in terms of neck alignment. But my neck, is a, it's a problem for me. I think it's not just so much about the saxophone, it's the amount of time I spend hunched in this way over computers. As far as repetitive stress injury, uh, it's never been a problem for me because I've never really practiced for like long stretches in one go. Now, Bobby jumped in here and recommended vlog number nine where I talk about one of my favorite ways to break up practice time and then Noah said, yeah, but that doesn't really answer my question. Actually, it does, Noah, because if you use that approach, you can use it over a lot. You don't have to just use it for 90 minutes. You could use it over a longer period of time. The point is to break up your practice time. Ben Wendell told me once that uh, you know he puts the horn down a lot while he's practicing, like constantly puts it down and picks it back up as a way of sort of maybe just refreshing everything. Another quick tip. I love these grip strengtheners. You can get them from any, like, I don't know, uh, athletic store or whatever. These are very strong, so you wanna start with some light ones, but I normally do like five or 10, like in each hand, like this, full closures. And then what I like to do is, this is just to build up forearm strength, because your fingers are an extension of your forearms. So, you know, you may not realize how much your technique relies on your forearm strength, but, so then I take a coin, take like a nickel, or well, this is a penny, but, and just try to hold it. Can you see that? You probably can't see it. It's right, it's right there and don't let it drop. Building up forearm strength is very helpful. In general though, just don't practice for long continued periods of time. And, I, and this is another subject, but I'm just not a big believer in that you need to practice six hours a day anyway. Maybe for a short period of time that can be helpful, but in the long run, it's not a, you know. Anyway, break up your practice time. Limeep, same thing, man, where's your picture? I'm having a hard time getting to your album recommendation list. Could you help me out? Just go to bobreynoldsmusic.com and there's a little place where it says subscribe for free. That's my newsletter. Anything I do with this album recommendation podcast, blah, 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 it, it will go out to the folks that are on that. So if, if you're already subscribed and it tells you you can't subscribe, it just means you're already on my newsletter, on my mailing list. Um, just, you'll, it'll send you an email and you can go back and update it and there's a little check boxes, check the podcast. Music Nick. Okay, weird question. Is it possible that the cover of Hindsight is a building in Basel, Switzerland? It could be, I don't know. Anybody out there from Basel, Switzerland? My designer, Jonas Bostrom, who's, who also did the artwork uh, and design for Can't Wait for Perfect, he did this one and um, so it could be that, I'm not sure. It's really cool though, isn't it? Just Joe's Strap, good choice. How are you liking it? Um, I forget which, this maybe was one of the videos where I was playing like September song a couple of vlogs ago. I've been using it on and off, but I'm, I'm I, honestly, I'm back on the Dijak strap. That that sounds really weird to say. I'm back on my Dijak strap. It feels more comfortable, feels like home. The, the Joe's one is nice. I just don't love the feeling of the leather on my neck. Peter, Peter, where's your picture? Hey Bob, what kind of metronome do you use? I used to carry this around in my saxophone case. This is the metronome. But now that you know we have these smartphones, I, I have a I have a metronome on my phone. On the phone, I use this thing called Tempo. The most important thing is don't let the metronome do the subdividing for you. That's how, if you want to develop really solid time, you need to do the subdividing. While that metronome is clicking 60, I'm subdividing in my head. Kevin, hey Bob, loving your, okay. It seems like you have the metronome on one on one and three, am I correct? Do you always do ballads on one and three? Two and four or one and three, it's like one of those topics, right? In general, I use two and four if it's anything in the medium swing range. It's not a rule. For a ballad, for something slower, yeah, I'm using it as one and three. Both both are valid approaches, but at a slower tempo, tempo like that, yeah, the one and three just is like, 
more solid for me. Cole Porter, sorry, Cole Parker. Where's your picture, Cole? Do you do Skype lessons? Yeah, uh, yes and no. Go to bobreynoldsmusic.com and there's a link up there that says teaching that explains how I do it. Uh, I actually do something I think way cooler than the Skype lessons. Davy Zars, Davy, where's your picture? Bob, did your altissimo get so goo? Is there like a method you use to practice getting the notes out in tune and clear? I would love to know. I'm an alto saxophonist. Any advice would help. You gotta start with overtones. If you need a book for that, Sigurd Rasher's Top Tones for Saxophone has a lot of great stuff, but you know, this overtone series, and it's not enough to just play the overtone series. Like the exercises are really important. I actually started with my very first saxophone teacher, he got me this book. I think it's out of print by Rosemary Lang. And one of the cool things about it is, you know, it's filled with exercises like uh, the, the, like nursery rhymes and stuff that you play up top. It's got fingerings, it's got exercises. If you can find it, it's a cool book. But I, I didn't ever use it a ton. It's like I got enough to just understand the fingerings and what you need to do. It's all about the support down here and the right thing here and airflow and there's a lot of tuning exercises you probably need to do before you even get into overtones which is why the Sigurd Rashard book is great because it'll help you like really hearing fifths and fourths and stuff like that. As far as technique it's all about just don't allow yourself to play any faster in the middle of the horn like let's say you're playing a scale. If you want to develop technique in the altissimo register, don't allow yourself to play any faster in the middle of the horn than you would in the top of the horn. So you want to even the whole thing out. Noah said, Noah, is this or the same Noah from the other? Where's the picture, Noah? Could you play more standards on YouTube with backing tracks? I don't know, I feel like that's kind of boring when it's just me sitting there playing. Like, is that boring? Ben, picture, great. Bob, if I order hindsight right now, will it be signed? Yes, it will. Philip, Philippe. Do you find it hard connecting the changes with minimal effort? Uh, well, it takes a lot of effort to work on connecting the changes so that I can connect them with minimal effort. Is that something you've worked on a lot? Yes, check out the last vlog, number 120. Jim, Bob, some time ago you talked about time management and made reference to an older book, and then I suggested, was it uh, episode, I don't know what episode, but that link is, in, is there. I don't even know what this one is from. <laughs> I think it was like episode 25, 28, 20. Does anybody know? I don't remember. I've talked about a number of books and I've probably talked about time management a few times. If anybody remembers, maybe let me know in a comment on this video. Andre, what was the song happening at 918? I think this was from the vlog Tour Life Part 3 at the end of it. And that song, that band was Maz, Mike Maz Maher from Snarky Puppy with Jason Thomas on drums, by the way, same guy that was in yesterday's vlog playing with Mark Letiri, plays with Snarky Puppy. But that was Maz, check out Maz, so bad, he, bad, you know, as in good, uh, M-A-Z. Nick, need a picture. Hey Bob, love the new album. Was wondering how you made your studio. Sometimes you practice past midnight, so it must be good. Yes, this whole room is soundproof. So from outside, you can't hear anything that I'm doing in here. Um, it took a lot of time, effort, money. I didn't do it myself, but it was a long time coming. I actually have pictures and some video of the process. Perhaps I should do a, an episode on that. Kieran, picture. Hey Bob, I was wondering, do Snarky Puppy play live to a click? No. James says, picture James, picture. Where can I get high quality sheet music of Bob's music? Uh, go to bobreynoldsmusic.com forward slash sheet music. There's probably a link up there too. It's not all up there. Like I only have a couple albums, but I'm working on it. You have sheet music for when it's over. Yes and no. I have the old sheet music, but I feel like I need to redo it. I think I have it from when we went in the studio and it didn't, the song didn't even have a title. I'm interested in the scales you're using for the fast runs. Um, yeah, that's a deeper question. Mecca, picture, way to go. Uh, not sure you ever figured out what the little black circular thing was, but I found one. Yeah, I think I there was a vlog. I think I called it like assembly required. I, I, I don't remember anymore, but um, it took me a while. I did find out what it was. It actually was a pad from my low C key on the saxophone. People said that in the comments and I didn't believe them, but they were correct. Be the change you wish to see. B, where's your picture? I have a bit of a technical question. I recently recently switched from soprano to tenor and I'm practicing overtones, but for some reason my high notes always sound a bit too clean. I was wondering how do you get that a screaming sound in your higher notes? Uh, 
pe different people do it different ways. For me, I'm always trying to make it clean. Sometimes I, I just overblow, maybe the reed's a little too soft. Um, I don't do the whole like vocalizing thing, like Joe Lovano does that stuff, Kenny Garrett does that stuff, other people do that. I, I tend to go more for the clean sound, but sometimes it breaks, especially Altissimo A flat for me. That one, I can I can split that one more than I'd like to at times. Lately with the SBA, um, I've been embracing it a little bit more. Derek, where can I get, Derek, where's your picture? Where can I get that shirt? This shirt, well, how about that? As I said before, this was I made this as a as kind of a fun thing for the saxophone camp this summer, but there is a link to that also on my website, bobreynoldsmusic.com. There's a thing that says t-shirt. Crawford has a picture, nice job, Crawford. Sad to hear you're not doing international shipping in the future. You know, I'm not saying that it won't, ha like I do would love, I, I would love to be able to get them out. It's just that it's a lot, it's like five to 10 times more effort on the back end and expense and everything to ship it international. And then things get lost. Sometimes they get held up in customs or people have to pay. Like somebody has to, said they were having to pay basically more than the cost of the album just to get it out of customs on there. It's just a logistical twisted mess. So I would like to figure out a better system, but yeah, we'll see. Oliver, love the vlogs, but maybe gain some weight. Yep. I, I it's, it's true. I'm a little on the light side right now. I'm one of those guys, I'm like a, they call it a hard gainer. It's hard for me to gain weight. I'd have to like be in the gym all the time and drinking creatine and stuff. Dominic, what's the West Coast scene like? Um, it's great. Asthma, holy bleep, Justin Mendez is there. Um, yeah, that was in the the one time at Sax Camp vlog, a couple back. He's been there at the last two camps. Bad dude, very young player, super burning. And music, the great and all powerful music. When's the Ben Wendell vlog coming? Ben Wendell vlog is coming. It's gonna happen soon. Here's the thing, I made it. I already made it. I spent hours and hours making it, editing it, and then I accidentally deleted it, and I was really pissed off, and I just couldn't bring myself to do it all over again. Can you talk about TMJ or anything orally related? Uh, I don't have, I don't know that I have TMG, but I do think I have a little bit of like a lockjaw thing, something over here. Only recently, like after years, it just popped kind of recently. I used to have this clicking in my jaw, and it just kind of popped like, like a couple weeks ago, and I'm almost amazed. It's not doing the popping anymore. It's been a real relief. I don't know, you should see a doctor probably if it's really an issue for you. The only thing I can recommend is yawn stretches. I would do this sometimes where I'd, if I'm like in the car, I'd just sit there and be like, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. what I said was I'm, I'm just holding my mouth open for a long period of time and I'm trying to stretch this muscle around there. And Tommy from yesterday's vlog, uh, you still want the smudged cover, the... Uh... <laughs> I think you're referring to the the test cover that I mentioned where I have all of the uh, these are all the different sharpies and pens I tried for the smudging yeah I still have that why would anybody want this it's a mess okay that was a long so Ben Wendell vlog I think I'm gonna get that out this week yeah within this week